Hey guys, what's up? It's Wolf here, one and only, and uh, you guys know what time it is. Knights Chronicle has finally gotten a new update where they have costumes, and not really much has changed with the costumes. All they added was like a hundred crystals to it instead of making it accessible to, you know, free to play. You know, I would have bought it for like a thousand, if anything, you know, <laughs> a thousand crystals, you know, that, that would have been, you know, fine. As long as I can access them. But nah, never mind. But anywho, enough about that. So we got Emil, Junia, and Lily. We also have this ticket. Let's see what we get. So we're going to take a look at Rebecca. Eh. Rebecca's not really all that interesting to me, so I'm not really going to use her. Feels bad for her, huh? Anywho, let's go down. Yeah, hopefully they do have the characters in here. Okay, yeah, they do. Okay, so first we're going to take a look at Junia. Let's see. Eh. She doesn't really drastically change. The only thing that really changes is her coloring. You know, she gets like some extra silver and stuff, but nothing really all that drastic. All right, let's look at the skills. She has wind units increase their crit damage. Okay, that's nice. All right, let's take a look at the skills. First skill inflicts damage to one target. Has a chance to hit targets adjacent. Not half bad. Two inflicts damage to three targets. Has a chance to fuse. Okay, maybe that's in the, the skills. I, I, I always get caught up when there's a new ability or something. I need to stop just because I gotta I gotta read the passive. But 60% chance to cast Fuse on the target for six turns. Obtain a festival prep. Uh, let's see. Allies and enemy turns are counted towards the... Okay. If it's like a bad debuff or something. Anywho, third skill. Flicks damage on one target. Has a chance to cast Fuse on a target to or adjacent to it. I'm sorry, I had a burp. That totally went wrong. Let me re let me go ahead and reread this one. Has a chance to cast Fuse on a target and the two adjacent. So, if you guys don't know what adjacent is, like I say all the time, it is basically characters that are beside the target you hit. Not everybody knows what adjacent means. I'm just going to say that now. That's that's exactly why I say it all the time. Alright. Festival prep. Decreases damage taken by 30% when the caster has festival prep. 50% chance to gain... A normal immunity. Okay, that's that's nice. Consume festival prep at the end of the turn for the caster to get 30% attack for two turns. That's actually not half bad. But what's up with the whole fuse thing? Obtains festival prep at the start of the turn. 100% chance to cast fuse on an attacker. For three turns when the caster dies. Okay, so none of this really talks about her fusibility. Hold on, let's go check our little handy dandy book over here. Help book. It should be in here. Uh, it is. Skill effects. I'm guessing this is a debuff. Yeah, fuse. So yeah, it's basically like the bomb. That's pretty straightforward. Takes damage when the status ends. That's basically what fuse is. Okay then. Let's go look at her uh, skills. See how they look. Now oh, she's gonna be hitting people for a home run. Oh, 
Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay, that actually looks pretty dope. Okay. Hit him with a bomb squad out here. Okay. Next is Lily, who is our Avent. Have to go out and check <laughs> just, to just, just to make full on sure. Yeah, she's Avent. Uh, let's take a look. Not a huge fan of the dress. Yeah, def. Not a huge fan of the dress. Or clothes at all. Never mind. <laughs> I like this one compared to the other two. All right, let's take a look. Gil has a increase of water allies. Uh, mostly strike. That's good, especially by thirty percent. You can definitely team that up with Teo, and that's going to be like really deadly. But first, let's look at those skills and see if it's worth it. Oh, so her first skill has a chance to inflict charm, which uh, mm, that's going to be quite terrifying depending on how high this goes, but it flicks it on one target, by the way. Eh. Not as high as um, Surtix. Now, Surtix is way scarier when it comes to charms, for sure. Which is, yeah, kind of a mess right there. But this is still also terrifying if you max it out. So, yeah. Next, second skill. Inflicts damage to a target and adjacent. And it penetrates if the target is male. Alright, so she's a huge counter to male characters. Just like Surtic is a huge counter to females. All right, third skill, inflicts damage on all targets and has a chance to charm Mel's for one turn. So I'm pretty sure if you increase this, it's gonna be probably like 65 and two turns. Oh no, just 60. And it's up to two turns. Eh, decent, not nothing to cry home about. All right, passives. Oh. Increases evasion by 40% if the caster has damage over time. Ooh. Attacks deal penetration when the caster has a debuff. Okay. Never mind. Her passive definitely changed my mind to how good she can be. Because we all know penetration can do a lot. It's not defense in aura, but it is penetration, so you're going to be hitting through those shields and the immunity. So that's going to be really nice. But that evasion is also going to be like Amon's. So, yeah, any dungeon that has, like, annoying poison, which are pretty much all the wind dungeons, so that's completely makes her useless inside of that area, just because they're literally going to all be inside a wind dungeon. All right, next, her level 60 passive increases damage dealt to Mel's by 80%. Okay, decreases all the damage of Mel's by 30% by one turn of the wave. That started the wave. Increases crit damage if the caster has damage over time. Eh, for both of these, she's decent. The only thing I'm actually liking here is this stuff. But the damage to melee units can actually be really terrifying. So that means this advent is probably going to force us to use female characters. So that means Ian could probably be getting destroyed in this dungeon, if I'm correct. Hopefully they don't have any BS where you have to bring the same elements. That's going to be really annoying. And hopefully she doesn't absorb water. Like, I'm pretty sure they're going to make her. Because then they're, they're just going to counter tail every time. They're going to make sure they counter tail every dungeon. I'm sure of it. Alright. Animations. Alright, what's the three? Three. 
Jeez, is everybody dealing with bombs this week? <laughs> all right, Lily. All right, character. All right, Amelia. Definitely like Amelia's design. I could go with either. Because she looks dope. All right. Okay, that's actually pretty cool. Alright, let's get down into it. Leader skill increases when allies attack by... Okay, why did, why did I put your dialogue? Because you're going to be taking forever with a whole full paragraph for me. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Leader skill. Give wind units 40% attack, which is nice. First skill. Penetrates and attacks one target. If the target has damage over time or shield cast penetration damage for every effect okay so she could actually be killing Sid and Kristen especially if they stack those not not half bad actually like that all right second skill Inflicts penetration damage to targets and adjacent. Uh, this same thing if the target has a shield or immunity. Oh, never mind. It has a 80% chance to stun the target for one turn for each effect. So is it like stack? Okay, nah. It's just... Has a chance of stacking or stacking the chances or turns? Not sure. Okay, I'm pretty sure it's not stacking like the stuns. Like if you hit them with, if they have like a shield and immunity, you hit them with this, it'll stack like up to four turns. No, I don't think it does that. That'd be too broken. That would definitely be too broken. I think it's just if they have a shield, they have a chance of getting this. But it says for each effect, so that's going to be confusing. Mm, we shall learn that. Alright, third skill. Inflicts penetration damage on all enemies. Has a chance to cast Weaken on three enemies that, to decrease their target's max HP. Current max HP by 90% for one turn. No, for two turns. Okay, so it's that skill again. The one um, Elizabeth has. Okay, now it's time to get into the passive. Obtains engraving of protection when attacked. Decreased damage taken by 30% and increases your attack by 25% for two turns. When a caster has... Grave of Protection when attacked stacks up to two times. Grave of Protection disappears at the start of the turn. Okay, so as long as she's attacked, she keeps this. So, if anything, you would want to kill her with the first person you hit her with, where she's going to get this, and she's going to be a lot more tankier. Okay, I kind of like this one. Alright, level 60 passive. Obtains Graving of Protection at the start of the wave and increases damage dealt to targets with shield or damage immunity. Okay, yeah, that's going to be great for PvP. She's literally a PvP unit, for sure. And the thing is, I don't want to summon for this unit. <laughs> Just because she's for PvP. She has no use for me in PvE. So I'm probably not going to summon for her, unfortunately. Even though she does look pretty cool. Yeah, she definitely looks pretty cool. Ah, man, difficult choices on who you want to summon. So I'm going to probably just save up. If anything, I'm not going to try and go too deep into that. 
Alright, so we do have Lily's dungeon now that's already up. And we do have, like, new UI stuff. You also know who taunts who now. Thank God. Because that's been a huge issue, especially if there's, like, multiple tanks on the team. That's always been, like, really annoying. Let's try out the dungeon here. Let's see what can happen. See if we can easily do it, or is it difficult? <laughs> they, they threw out Cordelia. <laughs> they, they knew what it was. It's alright, because we have Eamon now. Well, Ian. Eamon. I mean, we do have Eamon, but... Let's not do that. I was to say, I have multiple teams here. I think this one was for Sinclair, so I'm going to change this one. But here's one of them. Of course, Ash. <laughs> so let's do this. Put you in the middle. Bring her. I mean, Lily isn't all that good, to be honest. She's she's all right. She's not like anything just be like, oh, yeah, I definitely want this character. I want this character a lot. She's nothing like that. Oh, if anything, I should have just brought in my Ruby. I mean, she's not built, but she definitely would have helped Amelia. So we have another damager. Well, they don't have any shields, so we don't have to worry about that all too much. There's the protection. Which I don't want on her. Alright, so that's adjacent targets. Right, I'm just testing out all the skills. Just making sure. Alright, not really worried about lethal anymore. By the time we kill these guys, our two should be back, or nearly back. I can see why Elizabeth is recommended in here, though. Definitely see why she's recommended in here. If anything, I might do a banner summon for her. Just because Elizabeth is definitely a character I like. Rude? Very rude of you. Alright, second stage. Alright, only just you and me. Ah, you didn't do it on this one? Okay, now you did it. We want to keep the shield on. Just for that extra damage. There we go. Where everybody else is focused on the rest. Yeah, I could just use friends. I, I don't have to really summon for it because I know I have a lot of well buddies. We're going to get the characters, like, very quickly. Ah, uh, let's go ahead and attack you. Okay, so she just summons two at the end. Okay. 
Okay, 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 okay. Let's go over here and attack this guy. Okay, let's go ahead and use our two. I was gonna see if I can get weakness, but I just realized that it would, wouldn't even be their turn at that point. Like, she's literally gonna get it off before she comes back. Alright, we're gonna try and control this. No, don't take off the shield! Why? Why do you do such a thing? Oh, well, she's pretty much stunned anyway, so. But who died? Oh. Nobody important. I know that's rude of me, but nobody important. <laughs> okay, why did I do that? My special self. There we go. Stop. See, even, <laughs> even Chris was just like, dude, chill out. All right, here she is. Hold up. What the hell is that? Oh, that's before her berserk. So she's one of those characters. So, no, you can bring Teo in here if you want to. Wait. Ian? Ian, what happened to you, buddy? What did she do to you? It's another one of those really annoying bosses where... You have to kill her within the time. That's I'm not a huge fan of that, to be honest. She's gonna summon something, isn't she? There's no way a boss like this would never summon. Okay. That must be extra damage to male units. That's what that must be. Yep. Extra damage to male units. Nah, I don't think it is. Well, actually, nah. Nah, it's definitely is extra damage to male units. So that's pretty much your little excitement ender right there. So I'm gonna start leveling up um, Ruby. Too bad they kicked out Cordelia, so that's a match out of the way. Which her nuke is probably just going to one-shot everyone. Alright, let's see what her nuke is. Unfortunately, we don't have any other wind tanks. Oh my god. Jesus Christ. Wait, hold up. Nah, you can't. I was gonna say you probably could, like, one on one her. But that damage is too great. The, you, you can't one on one her. Especially with that. It, it's kind of impossible. Like, you could one-on-one her a while and just go off your counter, but that's about as much as you're going to get. Even with, um... Okay, yep, we're dead. Yeah. Really impossible to just tank that. So you can't just be like, oh, Ramu one-on-one, unfortunately. And they know Cordelia would have been, like, perfect in here, so they just nerfed the shit out of her, unfortunately. Like I said, I don't think we have any other wind tanks, so taunting is kind of out of the question. And plus, when she rages, it, there's really no point in it anymore. <laughs> but that was actually interesting. We finally got to the third stage. Let me look. Let me look. What's up in here? Okay, we do got Ruby that we can build. Who else? Who else? 
Meh. Meh. Eh, I could. But if anything, I'll skip Lily's dungeon because, like I said, Lily's nothing to go home about. There's nothing to, like, be amazed with. Because she's, she's an alright character. If anything, if you're looking for a PvE characters, Lily is definitely not that. She's more of a PvP character for sure. If you're going into PvP, I would definitely recommend building for this. For sure. Just because that melee damage is going to be really devastating to um, a lot of like melee units. Like, Well, it's not going to be devastating to Verdandi or Morgana, which are the two really painful units you're going to have to deal with. But it will be quite strong against Aemon. But then again, Aemon's a tank. I'm not sure how that's going to work. But I can't wait for top ranks rankers to be using her. So I want to see how she does. That's going to be really interesting. But the first and second stage... But the first and second stage are pretty easy with Amelia. So if you're going to do this dungeon, dedicate yourself to it. If you are a PvPer, definitely recommend doing it. As for this character, it's kind of weird that she's not inside of the dungeon at all, but all right. But let's see, is Elizabeth Banner still up or is he gone? Elizabeth. Nope, he's gone. All right, I'll just wait for the next banner. These units are just here just because they have their um, costumes. Not really interested in the costumes, but I'm pretty sure they did change the, like the price of them, right? They changed it to like two hundred, which is fantastic. I mean, you still choose between a summon or a costume, but you're not choosing between like a whole freaking two summons and a half versus a <laughs> versus like a costume. Yeah, that's fantastic. So yeah, this is on sale again. Then the Aust Okay, so Mina's costume is just on sale randomly. Like she comes in and out. She's not like in here for two hundred afterwards. This just comes by now and then for some reason. For some weird reason. I might get rubies. Hmm. Might get Ruse too. Rubies and Ruse are probably the ones I'm gonna get. I can get Aemons. I don't think I'll now. Now costumes are actually well, the normal costumes are actually worth it. Special costumes I still don't think are actually worth getting, especially for twenty bucks. Twenty bucks is like buying a game on Steam, and that game of Steam will probably give you more enjoyment than a skin, <laughs> to be honest. I'm just saying, I'm just being realis realistic here, but this update has definitely been fun, interesting, very enjoyable, for sure. And when I think about it, this is going to be like really good for the future if they keep doing updates like this, giving us, you know, feedback. They need to talk to us more, for sure. Because from the patch notes, it doesn't really seem like they've been really giving us a whole bunch of information but they're starting to make changes and listen to the community especially since a lot of like popular people are leaving because that means if youtubers and streamers start streaming their game less that's just their advertisement going down way more and more so hopefully they they're aiming to keep us interested so yeah let's just hope for that but yeah with that said guys until then i'll see you on the next one Peace out. Swear it's gonna get better real soon. Don't let anyone tell you what you should do. I got a clear view. We're gonna make it soon. Just keep pushing through. Yo, what you got to lose? Yo, what you got to lose? Yo, what you got to lose? Just keep pushing through. Cause what you got to lose?